This is Dr. Laura Wing, and today we're going to be talking about vaginal discharge. The complaint of vaginal discharge is one of the most common uh, presenting complaints in a gynecologic office. Uh, vaginal discharge can be physiologic or pathologic. Pathologic vaginal discharge can be infectious or inflammatory. Infectious vaginal discharge can be from yeast, including Elbacan and Glabrata types. It can be from bacterial vaginosis, trichomoniasis. Uh, inflammatory vaginal discharge can be from discomative inflammatory vaginitis, or DIV, as well as from your genital atrophy. First, let's talk about physiologic discharge. Usually, there is very minimal amount, but can increase due to hormonal fluctuations, such as around the time of ovulation, um, as well as during pregnancy. On examination, the vaginal mucosa uh, is typically pink. Uh, the discharge is clear, or it could be a little mucusy, uh, or it could be a thin, white, flocculent nature. The pH typically runs between 3.5 and 4.5. On wet prep, one usually sees abundance of mature squamous epithelial cells with an abundant cytoplasm and a very pygnotic nucleus. As noted here, there are typically a few uh, leukocytes and oftentimes, especially in a well-estrogenized uh, woman, uh, plenty of lactobacilli. This is the kind of discharge that's typically encountered in bacterial vaginosis. This can oftentimes be asymptomatic. Some patients do notice the increased amount uh, as well as odor, typically described as fishy and typically worsens after sex or menstruation. On examination, the vaginal mucosa is pink, not erythematous. It's typically caused by bac uh, bacteria that's commonly encountered in normal vaginal flora, but just in increased number. So it doesn't elicit this intense inflammatory response. In addition, you'll usually see this very homogeneous white or yellow creamy discharge. Uh, pH is usually greater than 4.5. On wet prep, the most uh, noticeable is going to be presence of clue cells, typically greater than 20% of total squamous epithelial cells affected is considered uh, one of the diagnostic criteria uh, for BV. There should be no lactobacilli. As a matter of fact, if there is ample lactobacilli, it pretty much in, uh, excludes the diagnosis of BV. There should be normal number of leukocytes because, again, it's not an inflammatory response. Next, let's talk about um, yeast infection or candida vaginitis. Those, the most common are the candida albican vaginitis. Um, these can be asymptomatic or it can cause intense itching, not just in the vagina, but also of the vulva and perineum. In addition, it can result in uh, severe dyspareunia from the inflammation, uh, and in some cases, uh, introidal fissures, especially at 6 o'clock where the navicular fossa is located. On exam, the vaginal mucosa is typically erythematous, uh, from the inflammation in the case of Canada albican. Um, one will also know the presence of curdy white cottage cheese-like discharge. On wet mount, the most noticeable are going to be the uh, hyphae and pseudohyphae with some budding. Typically, you'll also see some lactobacilli and normal numbers of leukocytes. Okay, on normal saline prep, or actually on wet mount, even under normal saline prep, um, you might see an abundance of hyphae, pseudohyphae, as well as budding yeast. Um, there may be normal amount of lactobacilli, uh, and typically there's not leukocytosis. Canada is usually even better seen with a KOH preparation. This employs a 10 to 20% KOH solution, 
that dissolves the cell membrane in keratin of epithelial cells and allows uh, better visualization of the fungal elements. Uh, you can tell that this is uh, Canada Elbcam because it has hyphae and pseudohyphae. Uh, neither are seen in the case of Canada glabrata. This is a KOH prep on a patient infected with Canada glabrata. You see only budding yeast with complete absence of hyphae and pseudohyphae. It is because of the absence of those two elements that Canada glabrata doesn't produce as in intense of an inflammatory reaction on the vulva and vaginal mucosa. And so patients may not complain of the usual intense pruritus. Instead, they may have just very minimal irritation with some introidal dyspareunia. Next, we move on to the discharge associated with trichomoniasis vaginitis. This is an infectious pathology with intense mucosal inflammation. Despite that, majority of patients are actually asymptomatic. Some may come in complaining of increased amount of discharge, usually a little bit more than what they might encounter with bacterial vaginosis. They may also experience some odor, some dysuria, and even dyspareunia. On exam, the mucosa is intensely erythematous sometimes with petechiae, uh, thus giving rise to the term strawberry cervix. What you also will see is this profuse, frothy discharge that pulls in the vaginal vault. Here's an example of the frothy uh, discharge. Uh, pH is typically elevated, much greater than 5, anywhere between 5 to 7. Here is an example of the strawberry cervix that results from intense mucosal erythema causing discrete punctate hemorrhagic maculae. On wet mount, you'll usually notice immediately the intense leukocytosis with a lot, a lot of white blood cells all around. In about 50% of the time, you'll also see the actual uh, organism, trichomoniasis vaginalis, which is a protozoa. It is very similar to the size of a white blood cell and therefore is easily missed uh, in amongst the background of intense leukocytosis. The flagellate organism is usually teardrop shaped when it's warm and active. But as the specimen cools, uh, the organism becomes round and immotile and therefore making it much more difficult to distinguish from the surrounding leukocytes. And this probably attributes to the uh, poor diagnostic sensitivity of a wet mound. In the diagnosis of trichomoniasis. Also commonly seen in patients with trichomoniasis is an increased number of immature squamous cells. These are cells that typically reside in the basal and peribasal layer of the vaginal mucosa and is typically not exposed to the vaginal secretion except in cases of intense inflammation such as trichomoniasis but also uh, in DIV, discomative inflammatory vaginitis, and uh, vaginal lichen planus. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, trichomoniasis and DIV are virtually indistinguishable in presentation. Uh, and the only way to know for sure what you're dealing with is to send a uh, DNA probe to look for trichomoniasis. Or in those Patients that are very high risk, you can go ahead and just treat them for trick. These are various diagnostic tests uh, available today for uh, trichomoniasis vaginitis, vaginalis. Sorry, as you can see, wet prep, uh, wet mouth sensitivity is between 55 to 60 percent, quite suboptimal. There are some point of care tests uh, that are limited to symptomatic patients only and not to be used for screening. The most popular one is the OSOM, O-S-O-M, trichomonas, with a sensitivity of 62 to 95 percent. The one that I use the most is the Aptima TV assay, which is the only FDA-approved nucleic acid amplification test. You can get your samples from endocervical swabs, vaginal swabs, or urine specimen even, or even from your pap 
solution uh, that you submit for liquid-based cytology. Next, we're going to talk about uh, the inflammatory uh, etiologies for vaginal discharge. We already talked briefly about discriminated inflammatory vaginitis, how it is very similar to trichomoniasis, uh, virtually indistinguishable, really, in its presentation and wet prep appearance, and that the only way to tell them apart is through a nucleic acid amplification test for trick. The other inflammatory uh, condition that can cause a vaginal discharge is uh, atrophic vaginitis, essentially from your genital atrophy. Most patients with your genital atrophy are actually uh, without any discharge, and they typically complain of dryness and burning and dyspareunia. Occasionally, the intense atrophy can cause an inflammation that can produce a discharge that, when examined in the wet mount, will have an uh, increased number of immature squamous cells, such as the intermediate and the parabasal cells. Here is an example of a wet mount in a patient uh, with severe atrophy. Besides the immature squamous cells that have uh, a very spherical cytoplasm with enlarged uh, but smooth spherical nuclei, uh, please also notice the increased number of leukocytes. Uh, and it's the latter that usually accounts for the leukorrhea. Here's another example of parabasal and intermediate cells in the center uh, compared to a mature squamous cell that's to the right and left of the field. So that is a synopsis of the various kind of vaginal discharge uh, that one might encounter in a gynecologic practice. And here's a um, spreadsheet that summarizes all that we discussed.